Amen. Praise be to God. The, the song has two pieces, right? It has a 45 piece, If since most of us are older here, and it has a 78 piece, right? Well, we're going to sing the, 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 the 78 piece with the choir, so let's stand to our feet and praise God with them. Yeah, yeah. God, we are here to praise God. Every time I come to First Church, God provides encouragement through somebody that God is here and He will do it for you. Yesterday afternoon, we supported Cliff Mason and his family as they remembered his mother and the deacons, the bereavement committee, and many of the members came and gave wonderful support. And I want to just praise God that even when times are hard, we are here to represent that God can do it for you. Let's praise God. If you were to ask people what are they feeling in this time? Many people would tell you, we're feeling anxious or fearful. Amen. There, there, there are people who will say, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. And even more, I'm not sure how I am going to do. My son, who is home, thought that this was the worst idea that I had come up with, that why are we worshiping? In fact, he said to me that if you were to get sick, where are you going to move to? <laughs> well, I, I, I thought he was going to move out. You know, we suggested where he could go, but he thinks I should be moving out. But there are a lot of anxious people. And there are a lot of folks who are living this journey without faith. 
when you don't have faith in God, when a crisis like this happens, you don't have anything to stand on. I'm not saying the anxiety and the stress and the battle isn't real, but at some point you got to find a flooring from which to fight the battle and the anticipation for all of us in the coming weeks and months is that this is going to be a battle if you have no foundation. It's hard to fight the battle. In, eight, in 1348, the bubonic plague came upon Europe and in three years, 50 million people died. People went to bed feeling really good. And they, by the third day, they had all kinds of illnesses. And many of them, by the fourth day, they were gone. Perfectly healthy going to bed. And then you call the priest and the doctor, and when you called the priest in those days, it meant they were coming to perform last rites. In our country, we've also gone through times when everything fell apart. The depression years were really challenging. In 1929, when the market fell, people in one day lost everything. Those who had food had no food. Those who thought that they had jobs had no jobs. Many people had to line up to be able to get the support that they needed. Radical change happened in people's lives. And during the bubonic page plague and during the Great Depression, a number of organizations stepped forward. But one of them that stepped forward was something called the Church of Jesus Christ. And the Church of Jesus Christ stepped forward with a message of hope. It didn't deny that this was a hard and difficult time. It didn't deny that people were struggling. It didn't deny that people's health and well-being and Whole lives were being turned upside down. But it came to the moment with a message of hope that God is still there. And I'd like, as I stand in this pulpit this morning, like you, not sure how the coming weeks and days are going to play out, I'd like to invite you to remember that hope is redemptive. That hope says that even when things turn ugly and when things are upside down, that God is still here. Our scriptures tell us emphatically in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because God is going to walk with me. And I want you, as you go into this period of testing and difficulty, not only to listen to the media. The media is informative, but the media doesn't have the final statement. Listen to the word of God, which reminds us that even when things fall apart, God's presence 
is reliable and you can trust in God. There are folk who are here this morning forgetting that he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There are folk who are here this morning who have forgotten that he says, when I am with you, you can do all things. That there are folks who have forgotten that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I just said it differently the last time. There are folks who are here who need to be reminded that the love of God is so all-encompassing that you can't escape from God's presence. During this time, rely on God's presence. If you want to ready yourself for what is coming, this is, you wash your hands, you protect yourself from all other people, but also you get on your knees and you get the Holy Word in you and you ask God for the ability to trust in His presence. Here is what our Lord Jesus Christ Says He says, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink, or about your body. Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? You see, either we're going to be the Christians of faith in this time, or we're going to be the faithless Christians. And when you're, have you ever met a faithless Christian? Somebody who doesn't believe that God is real, that God is active, that God is going to walk with you. And some of us will go deep down into the valley of suffering, but he will be with us and he will guide us. Some of us will be like the disciples and Jesus in the midst of the storm. And when things are upside down, you sometimes will forget that the Lord is there. But if you go into the bottom of the, of the ship and you just reach out to God, he will come and he will say to you and to me, peace be still. So I met a couple of worried Christians this morning. I met a couple of people whose anxiety was overwhelming them and I just want to say to you, you got to trust in God's presence. Let me say it a different way. I'm not a crybaby. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. But if you put a scary movie on, sometimes I'm in the seat and I'm feeling nervous, even though it's a movie, I can feel something happening in my back and the back of my neck and almost like they're going to get me. And I praise God that now on the TV or on the computer, if you don't want to see it, you can just fast forward. And there are some of us who want to fast forward this time. Click! And you don't have to deal with it. But God saw this moment even before we saw it. God saw it before all the experts and all the leaders in the world saw it. And I believe that because our God sees everything, that God will see us through. Can somebody just say, I'm going to trust God to lead me through? I'm going to trust God to provide for me. And God's provision 
is sometimes difficult to understand because there are times on the journey when you wonder, am I going to be forsaken? Are things going to blow up? Are, are, are things going to be such that I am not going to be able to make it? Listen to Jesus again. He says, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? Jesus was being provocative. Because every responsible, rational person wants to take care of his or her business. Every responsible, rational person wants to believe that we can control and manage our way out of every circumstance on the journey. And yet Jesus is saying that you're going to come to a moment when you have to rely on God and you will realize that God will see you through. Trusting in God's provision is interesting. So we, we, are, we as a church like the gathered community. We like being together with each other. And yet trusting in God is about developing this inner confidence and strength that comes from knowing that God is with you. And when God is on the inside, then guess what? If we don't, if we can't come to worship, it doesn't matter because all of us become individual temples of the living God. And there's that mighty power that lives in you that gives you the assurance that the promises and the provision of God are with you to lead you through crisis. The word of God tells us that we should trust in God's power. And it says it in a weird way because it says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Paradoxical, right? How can you be strong when you're weak? Anybody here this morning feels weak? When you're weak, you go to God and you rely on God. And God infuses me and you with his amazing presence. And all of us today are being encouraged to find a deeper fellowship and a deeper relationship with God. There are many of us are hearing voices today. And the voices say, quit. The voices say, it's not going to, you're not going to make it. The voices are saying, think only about yourself. And the heart of today's text is do not be conformed to the world. The world is focused on because of the dire situation, each woman or man, each boy or girl, each young person only thinking about themselves. Let's batten down the hatches. Let's make sure we have enough food. And so we go to the supermarket needing one loaf of bread, but we come out with ten. We, the other night, I, I went to stop and shop for a little bit of milk. Walking down aisle number two, nothing. Aisle number three, nothing. Trying to find something and multiple ones of us are knocking each other out for the item. 
And then we get to the lion, and the lion is forever. You would have thought this was Armageddon. In our time, the invitation is, can you stop just thinking about yourself? And to realize that for us to make it through this time, it's going to need all of us. It's going to need every person in a church to work together. It's going to need churches to work together with members of their community. It's going to need neighbors who never talk to each other to find a way to talk to each other. It's going to need young people and middle-aged people and older people What's the category above older? Ancient people. It's going to need all of us to say we can do this together. Do not be conformed to this world. The world which says the only way you can make it is if it's all about me, myself, and I. I want to tell you this morning that there was a time when the depression hit America and things were really hard. In farming communities, what got people through were churches where people shared meals, where people shared picnics, where people asked, how is such and such doing? Let me see if he needs some water or if he needs some bread or she needs some eggs or she needs some flour or she needs some sugar. Everybody working together helps a community to get through a crisis. And the invitation of this time is not just to trust God, but to trust each other. Now, trusting each other in a land which says individualism is primary means that some barriers have to be broken so that we can work together and live together and fellowship together and grow together and support each other in a time of stress and difficulty. But as our... Great President Obama said, yes, we can. If you decide that we can do it, yes, we can. And every day you get up, just say, yes, we can. There was a young woman who grew up in France, who grew up in I think it's Italy, actually. At seven years old, a young woman by the name of Catherine heard the call of God. She heard it in a way which was really powerful. She, she said that she saw Jesus with Paul and Peter and John. And she announced to her parents that she was going to live a religious life. Well, her parents listened to her, which is a hard thing for most parents, and gave her a small room in the basement of the home so that she could focus on her devotion. She spent time praying. She spent time studying. She spent time devoting herself to the development of her faith and Catherine blossomed from a girl into an extraordinary woman who had spiritual power, moral clarity, and political power. Catherine was so committed that when the plague struck her hometown in 1374 and most people fled, she and those who followed her stayed to nurse the ill and bury the dead. She was said to be tireless day and night, healing all that physicians despaired. When the crisis abated, 
she didn't stop there. She went about preaching and sharing the good news to those outside of the church, bringing others to know the love of God. She continued at a time when the Roman Catholic Church had a time of challenge when the Pope was no, in, no longer in Rome, but had moved to Avignon, France. Catherine wrote letters to the Pope and said, the Holy Spirit is calling you to go back to Rome. It's time for you to get up and to do the right thing in Rome because in France you are being controlled by the politicians and you're no longer the voice of God. You're simply the voice of politicians. You see... What Catherine had learned in her relationship with God is that in tough times, tough people find a way. That in times of difficulty and challenge, you can either choose to break apart or you can choose to become better. Catherine had the imagination that with God working through us, even the hardest times can become the best of times for the children of God. Can I give you some things I heard from those in the Depression era? How they survived in tough times. Those who were part of the church said, we learn to simplify our life. We started every day with a positive mindset, appreciating what we have right now, and we just decided I'm going to simplify my life. Things which I thought matter don't matter. Let me focus on the main thing. Those who found their way through the challenge of the depression found a way of praying for faith, asking for God's mighty hand and intervention and God's promises to be manifest in their lives. And those who made it through the depression learned to be thankful in whatever state they found themselves. Most of us don't remember that before Paul got to Philippians 4 verses, verse 13, he, he says, I have, I've had good times and bad times. I've had times when the barn has been full. I've had times when it's been empty. I've had times when I've felt all empty and forsaken. But through whatever season I've found myself, I've learned I can do all things. Through Christ, who gives me strength. Our world is crying. Our world is hurting. And our world needs women and men of faith who will take this faith seriously and will say, yes, it's hard. Yes, it's painful. Yes, things are Difficult, but keep the faith because God is with us. I'm going to invite you to do something this morning. Think about five people in this congregation who you could honestly say for the next two weeks, I'm going to pray for them and I'm going to check on them. Write it on something, because if you don't write it, you don't, it's a wish. Write it on a bulletin. Greg scolded me that when I told him I was going to use the offering envelope, so I won't suggest that. But write it, write it down. Five names of people in this congregation who you're going to pray for and you're going to check on. And then write five names of people in the community. 
colleagues at work, friends at school, people who you see on the bus or the train or in the street corner who you're going to check on and say, I am going to find out how this person is doing and I'm going to encourage them and see how I can help them. Right, right, right down your five names on either side. Five and five. That's 12, right? Five and five. Okay, you're with me. All right, that's 10. And commit yourself for two weeks to praying and reaching out. You'll find that it does something for you. That instead of the focus just being you, you'll realize that the focus needs to be us. When you reach out, just don't talk about the news. Ask the person, how are you doing? And what can I do to support you? The scripture that we read uh, talked about togetherness and love, but it comes from a person who has consecrated themselves to saying, Lord, I want to be your vessel and your instrument in this time. And I'm believing this morning that in the worst of times, God brings out the best in people. I pray that God will bring out the best in you and that God will bring out the best in me. But it doesn't happen by wishfulness. It happens by remembering that daily we got to recommit ourselves to being God's instruments, God's vessels, and God's source of hope and healing for the world. May God guide us through this crisis, and may God give us power and strength and victory. Amen. Amen.